Hello my friends. Today we are going to cover chapter 7 getting to know plants. Uh, go outside and observe all the plants around you. Do you see that some plants are small and some are very big while some are just patches of green on the soil. Some have green leaves while some others have reddish one. Some have a huge red flower. Some have tiny blue ones while some have none. We do see uh, a variety of plants existing all around us near our homes in the school ground on the way to school in the parks and the gardens isn't it let us get to know the different parts of any plant this will help us understand the difference between plants and different kinds can you label the stem branch roots leaves and flowers uh, in this uh, figure now uh, we need to mark or a uh, label that which one is stem branch root leaves flowers and plants of the plants so in this image we know that okay not this image in this image so this is root this is stem these are leaves these are flowers okay so these this, uh, this was given to be labeled let us now go to nature walk make friends with many different kinds of plants and examine them closely now we need to see this image closely now here we can see that uh, a huge variety of plants exist like uh, huge trees uh, uh, small plants uh, so we need to study that what are these different types of plants these are herbs shrubs and trees look closely at the stem and branches of plant much smaller than you plant that are about your size and plants which are much taller than you feel the stem and try to bend them gently to see if they tend to be hard now uh, here an activity is given where we need to closely examine the plant which is smaller than us bigger than us and about our size okay so uh, we will now try to we have now uh, try to understand the hardness of the uh, hardness of the stem of the plants so we'll go further uh, here we need to uh, write this okay this is an activity now look carefully on this image so here uh, a part are the herbs b is the shrubs and c are the trees now herbs shrubs and trees they all differ uh, in the sizes and the thickness of the stem the a being herb b being the shrub uh, and c being the tree now we'll read further plants with green and tender stems are called herb now uh, here the definition of herb is given that is plants which are green and tender stems are called uh, herbs so now tender stems here refer to as uh, small stems they are usually short and not uh, have many branches some plants have the stem branches out near the base the stem is hard but not very thick such plants are called shrubs so now here the definition of shrubs are given that plants have the stem branches near the base the stem is uh, hard but not very thick such plants are called shrubs some plants are very tall and have hard and thick brown stem the stem uh, have branches in the upper part much above the ground such plants are called trees now uh, we always see we always say that we need to plant more trees and this and that but do we really know the definition of plant or a tree we don't know so tree uh, we refer to as a tall plant which has hard and thick brown stem so this is the basic definition of a tree so here we have uh, discussed the definition of herbs shrubs and trees um, based on the above uh, characteristics can you now correctly classify the plants listed by un complete column 4 in table 7.1 okay uh, 7.1 was a table that we have not discussed that is your personal uh, activity that uh, you uh, need to be performing to you know get more information about it now we'll go further now we talk about the stem uh, we should require a glass water dry drink a herb and a blade for this activity pour water to fill one third of the glass uh, add a few drops of red ink 
to the water cut the base of the stem of the herb and put uh, it in the glass as shown in this figure observe it in next day do you do any of the parts of the herb appear to have red color if yes how do you think the color reached there you can cut the stem across and look for the red color inside the stem from this activity we see that water moves up the stems other in other words water in other words stem conducts water okay so this is a very important line just like the red ink minerals dissolve and water also move up in the stem along with the water so the minerals which are present in the soil move in the upward direction along with the water so that is why the stem plays an important role to a uh, building a plant water and minerals go to leaves and other parts of plant attached to the stem through narrow tubes inside the stem pehli uh, did this activity with herb having a white flower she put one branch with a white flower in the water in glass a and added a few drops of red ink to the water she did a funny thing with another branch she spit it half a uh, way along its length and put two ends in the water of the glass b and c she put a few drops of red ink in a uh, glass b and blue ink in glass c she wants to you to guess would uh, what would happen to the flower in the glass a and uh, the flower put jointly in b and c when you had cut across the stem in activity 2 did you notice number of spots of red color arranged in the ring inside the stem did does this explain that result that pehli obtained try this activity yourself the next part of the plant that we are discussing is the leaf look at a uh, look at leaves of plants around you and draw them in your notebook you uh, are all the leaves of the same size shape and color no all the leaves are not of the same size shape or color how are they attached to the stem the part of leaf by which it is attached to the stem is called petiole this is petiole the part uh, of a leaf by which it is attached to the stem is called petiole this is petiole the broad green part of the leaf is called lamina so broad the most broadest part of leaf is called lamina this is the most broadest part of a lamina or you could say the central part of a leaf is known as lamina can you identify these parts uh, of leaf in plants around you do all the leaves have petioles uh yes mostly the plants have petioles let us get to know the leaves better by taking its impression if you thought uh, that leaves go uh, cannot sign here is an activity which will make you think again put a leaf under a white sheet of paper or a sheet in your notebook hold it uh, in a place are shown as in this figure hold your pencil tip sideways and rub it on the portion of the paper having the leaf below it did you get an impression with some lines on it are they similar to those on the leaves these lines on the leaves are called veins so the lines which are on the leaves are basically known as veins so these are the veins these are the lines on the uh, leaves so these are the veins we have discussed so we'll go further uh this vein is called midrib the central line or the central vein is known as midrib the design made by vein uh, in a leaf is called leaf venation the design so uh, in every leaf there are different designs made and these uh, variation of designs could be known as leaf venation if this design is net like on the both sides of the midrib the venation is reticulate uh, um, in the leaves of grass you might have seen that veins are parallel to one another this is called as parallel venation in the grass that we uh, usually see and is of small size so these have parallel venation that means parallel lines now we'll discuss activity 4 we will require a herb to transport transparent polythene bags and some strips do 
This activity during daytime on the sunny day use a healthy, well watered plant that has been growing in the sun for activity in close leaf branch of the plant in polythene bag and tie up its mouth as shown in the figure. Uh, the plant uh, uh, should be healthy and is to be covered with a polythene bag as shown in this figure. Uh, you will see some droplets of water the next day or after 2-3 days. Uh, but it's why. We need to uh, know that why there is uh, water droplets on the polythene bag. We will uh, further read. Water comes out of leaves in the form of uh, vapors by a process called transpiration. So, a uh, plants perform certain a certain uh, process that is known as transpiration. Plants release a lot of water into air uh, through this process. The transpira transpiration uh, involves releasing of lot of water in the air by this process. Why did we tie a bag around the leaves? Would we have seen the water from the transpiration of plants otherwise? No. We can't have been seeing uh, this transpiration of plants otherwise if we wouldn't have covered it with polythene bag because uh, the polythene bag is not open. It is closed and enclosed and it doesn't allow the air to uh, cross. So that's why it is a tight bag and uh, it doesn't allow the water droplets to evaporate. That's why we could see transpiration uh, or the water droplets to be collected on the polythene bags. So now we'll discuss the activity 5. We would require a leaf spirit, a beaker, test tube, burner, water, a plate, a iodine solution for this activity. Push, Put a leaf in test tube and pour spirit to uh, completely cover the leaf. Now, put the test tube in the beaker half filled with water. Heat the beaker till all the green color from the leaf comes out. Into the spirit uh, in the test tube, take out the leaf carefully and wash it in water. Put it on a plate and pour some iodine solution on it. What do you observe? Compare your observation with those done in chapter 2. When we tested food for the presence of different nutrients, does this mean that the leaf has starch in it? So we have we have to, uh, the leaf prepared their food in the presence of sunlight and green color substance present in them. For for this they use water and carbon dioxide for air. The process uh, is called photosynthesis. The process in which the plants uh, make their or prepare their food in the presence of sunlight is known as photosynthesis. Oxygen is given out in the process and food prepared by uh, the leaves it, uh, ultimately gets stored in different parts of the plant. So this stored food is known as starch which is uh, energy providing food for us. Now we'll discuss the next part of the chapter that is roots. So uh, we'll discuss from the activity that is you would require two pots, some soil, kurpi, blade, or a pair of scissors and water this activity is to be done in group of five four to five students select two weeds for same kind uh, from an open ground and dig them out take care that their roots do not break plants one of the weed in the soil in pot cut off the roots from the other weed and plant it in the soil uh, in pot b water them regularly observe the plants after a week now in the uh, a pot we have taken the roots and the b part we have cut the roots of the plant and we are regularly watering it okay what would happen from your perspective the plant which has roots with it only that part could be grown or only that part would uh, only that plant would require or could get minerals from the soil because uh, roots perform a uh, various function for the growth of the plants now we'll discuss the uh, activity 7 that is we required seeds of gram and maize cotton wool katori and some water take two katoris place some wet wa uh, cotton wool in them put three to four seeds of gram in one and maize in other 
Keep the cotton wet for by sprinkling water over every day until the sprouts have grown into young plants after a week. Try to separate the young plants from the cotton wool. Was it easy to separate cotton wool from the roots? Why? It was not easy. Because, uh, now we'll uh, further read that in activity 6, we could not easily pull out the plant from the soil. Right, we dug them out the plant the root helps in holding the plants firmly in the soil they are said to be anchors of the plants to the soil so you have seen that there are different kinds of stems and leaves do the roots also show a variety let us find out in act now we'll re read activity a that is uh in figure 17.7.16 and a and b carefully Look at the roots of the gram plants you have pulled out from the cotton wool. Do they look like the roots shown in figure 7.16a uh, or those in 7.16b? No, the roots are very different as you know, as you can see here. So because of the presence of uh, the cotton and sprinkled water, there is differentiation in the growth of the roots. Okay. So, and now we read the activity 9, that is, go to an open ground where many weeds are growing. Dig out a few weeds, wash the soil off the roots and observe them. Do you find that all the weeds that you have dug out have either the kind of root shown in figure 7.17 or as uh, in figure 17.7b? These are very different as you can see but why we need to uh, read that why they are different for the roots of kind shown in 17.7a the main root is called tap root from where the whole uh, root starts from a base as you can uh, see here the whole root is joined to one another but on the other uh, in the other diagram we cannot see that uh, a root is joined to one another as it is differentiated uh, so and the smaller roots are called lateral roots the smaller roots which are a part of tap root are known as lateral roots plants with the roots as shown in figure 7.17 do not have any main root all roots seem to similar these are called fibrous roots so in a uh, second image that are fibrous roots these are fibrous roots and these are tap roots okay now uh, we'll go further that is a uh, flower have you shown three branches of a rose in figure uh, 7.19 abc which one will help you best to recognize a plant obviously the c part it will be the best part to explain or recognize a plant but why which color did you see for flower in figure 7.1 uh, we'll see we'll go to 7.1 image that is this this is not an image or a color given but usually the flowers are colorful so in uh, we'll read the activity 10 that is we would require one bud uh, and two fresh flowers each of any of the following the tura china rose mustard brinjal ladyfinger gulmohar also a blade a glass a slide and uh, or a sheet of paper a magnifying glass and water observe uh, figure 17.7.20 carefully look at the prominent part of the open flower these are petals of the flower different flowers have petals of different colors where do you think the petals are in a closed bud which is the most prominent part of the bud did you see that this part is made of small leaf like structure this uh, leaf like this structure is known as sepals take a flower and observe its petals and sepals now answer the following question that are how many sepals does it have it is very difficult but we do we need to count it uh, are they joined together what are the color of petals and sepals how many petals does your flower have uh, are they joined to one another or are they separated do the flowers 
with the joined sepals have petals that are separated or are they joined together we need to make a table of it okay now we'll uh, study the different parts of the flower that are stem and pistil now we'll uh, read or we'll see the figure that is this is a bell shaped flower this is a, a, a in the bell shaped flower we have elongated it that the this central part is known as stamen and uh, from where the sepal is joined joined and uh, uh, the stem the stamens are coming out that is pistil these are the parts of flower uh, and the parts of the stamen or the upper part of stamen these are anthers. This elongated tube is filament. Okay, and uh, in in this part of a pistil, that is a style stigma ovary. In this ovary, the different parts, uh, the different uh, flower is grown. Or in other words, we can say this is a reproductive part of the plant. As uh, we can say in this picture, that is elongated picture of an ovary that is a longitudinal cut and this is a transverse cut so longitudinal cut these both are ovules of the parts of the ovary an ovary is part of pistil a pistil is part of uh, the flower so this was the brief introduction a uh, brief study of the chapter thank you so much